today we're going to be showing you how to install Boost Auto Parts tow mirrors onto your 2015 to 2019 GM SUV. This applies to Tahoe, Yukon, as well as Suburban. First thing we're going to do is remove the door panel. We're going to go ahead and remove this trim piece just using a small pick. Then we're going to remove this one down in the door grab. We're going to go ahead and remove this 7mm bolt. We're going to remove these two 7mm bolts. And there's two 7mm bolts at the bottom. We'll go ahead and remove those. Now you just need to release the trim clips. It's usually easiest to start in one of the bottom corners. Just using a small trim tool, releasing the clips. Now this door panel is a little bit unique. Rather than lifting it off, you actually pull it straight towards you so that the window seal stays on the door. So the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and press the lock lever down to make sure that we don't obstruct anything. Uh, you can see we have the window down. It is a little bit easier with the window down. Once we've released the bottom trim clips, as you previously saw, you're going to get up near that window seal and you're just going to pull it straight towards you. You should feel the clips release. Now once your door is loose, you want to make sure that you grab the lock lever on the other side. Make sure that you don't damage that. It just goes in this little rubber guide and then the door panel should be loose. So you can see the window seal actually stayed up on the window. Now we're going to go ahead and release the door handle. You're just going to go ahead and depress on that tab, pull it straight back and then out to the side and the ball socket will release. Now we're going to release this main connector on the door panel. To do that, you're going to slide that pink lock away from the gray lock and then there's a little black tab, you'll depress that and the gray latch will kind of slide out and then you'll be able to unplug the connector. And you just go ahead and release that trim clip so that you can remove the door panel. After that, the door panel should just remove. We're going to go ahead and release this trim piece right over here. Then that trim piece, you should just be able to pull it out of the little lip on the left there and it should just kind of release. We do not recommend taking this entire piece off as it can be a little difficult to put back on. Just pull it back enough so that you can get access to the mirror nuts. We're just gonna go ahead and release the mirror connector. Then using a trim tool, we're gonna release the guides for the wiring harness. You're gonna go ahead and remove the three 10 millimeter nuts holding the mirror on. You wanna make sure you're supporting the mirror on the other side. We're going to go ahead and remove the mirror. Some mirrors may have a clip up at the top holding them on. If yours has this, you can go ahead and use trim tool to go ahead and release it. Then you'll just want to guide the wiring harness out when you remove the mirror. And we're going to go ahead and mount the new mirrors provided by Boost Auto Parts. We'll start by just putting the wiring harness through the hole. And you want to make sure all the slack pulls through on that wiring harness and then you'll just go ahead and place the mirror up into position. Go ahead and pull the grommet with the wiring harness through. Now we're going to go ahead and put on the nuts. It's easiest to start with the bottom left hand nut. So just go ahead and put that on and make sure you're supporting it on the other side while you're doing this. Then you'll just go ahead and snug them up. I'm going to go ahead and clip the Boost Auto Parts harness into the locators. Then you'll go ahead and plug in the OEM connector. Then we're going to go ahead and take the extension lead provided by Boost Auto Parts and plug that in. There will be a varying amount of wires in this depending on the specific build of your mirrors. I'm going to go ahead and pull this rubber grommet out towards you. Now from here you can unwrap all the tape to pass the wires through the existing hole in the grommet or you can cut a small hole in the grommet, make sure you poke through to both sides and also make sure that you do not hit any wires in the process just so, so that you can pass these couple wires through. Now we have a metal coat hanger that we've straightened out, just something nice and firm and small that you can push through the grommet and you're just going to tape the wires to it. You want to make sure that you tape them fairly tight. Then after that, you're just going to go ahead and pass them through the grommet. And then as it comes through to the other side, you're just going to go ahead and pull it a little bit, and then your wires will come with it. Once we've untaped it from the coat hanger, we'll go ahead and pull the coat hanger back through. And then we'll go ahead and pull the wires through, getting all the slack all the way through. I'm going to go ahead and release the door side of the door harness. There's just a little rubber grommet. You're just going to squeeze that, and it'll just kind of pull out going to run the wires from the grommet there over to the grommet on the cab side. And pull all the slack, being careful not to chafe the wires. 
And just go ahead and place back in the grommet on the left there. I'm going to go ahead and release this connector over here. There's just a small latch at the top. You'll just kind of press that and that will come back. We're going to go ahead and release this gray door jam connector. There's just this pink lock. You're going to spin that down to the 90 degree position. So straight down and then the connector will release and can be pulled out. We're going to take our coat hanger and we're going to start on the cab side. Make sure you do not go inside the pink latch. You want to be outside of it. And we're just going to run that through this door boot. It's easiest if it's straight like this. You can bunch it up. It also gets a little bit easier. And we're just going to go ahead and grab that on the other side so we can fish our wires. We tape the wires to the coat hanger and we're just going to go ahead and pull it straight on through. Your wires should come with it. Now we've removed it from the coat hanger and we're just going to go ahead and pull our slack through. I'm going to go ahead and remove this interior trim bezel. It should just release with some body clips. And just go ahead and clear it around that trim there near the parking brake. And then there's some clips down at the bottom there. And just go ahead and release those. And then we'll just go ahead and set that off to the side. I'm going to go ahead and pass the wire from the outside over to the inside. You're just going to grab it on the other side with your hand. And then just go ahead and pull the slack on through. If you look at this, you can see that we actually ran the wires down beneath this gray connector over here. So there's going to be a little plastic piece that goes in there. You want to make sure that you don't chafe the wires at all, but it should be okay. Um, and then what you're going to do, you're going to go ahead and put this gray connector back in. Just line it up and it should kind of latch forward. Should slide in, and then once you have it all lined up, you'll slide the pink lock back up and it'll lock it in fully. Just going to latch the black clip there down at the bottom and then latch the top clip. I'm going to go ahead and place this grommet back in. Now the process for the passenger side is the exact same as the driver's side, so we just went ahead and ran the wires over. We ran them beneath the dash and you can see we just have the passenger side wires coming out over here. Using the same coat hanger technique, we just got the wires over to the driver's side. Now if your original mirrors had turn signals, the turn signal will be plug and play, so you will not need to wire in the turn signal or the ground. If so, you can disregard this step. Now we're going to go ahead and show you how to wire in the turn signals. To wire in the turn signals, we're going to be tapping to the brown and black connectors on the BCM. The brown and black connectors on the BCM are located right down here on the driver's side. So we're going to come right down here, and you can see right up here, there's these different connectors. We're going to be working with the brown and black. Now to remove these connectors, there's a latch on this side right over here. So you're just going to go ahead and depress the latch right here and pull back on the connector and it will remove. So we'll do that for both the brown as well as the black. So now to tap the left turn signal, you're going to be tapping onto pin 2 of the brown connector. Pin 2 is located in the top row if you're looking with the latch towards the top. One over from the left. In this case, it's a blue with a white stripe. Now we're just going to take the T-tap provided by Boost Auto Parts and place it onto pin 2. Again, in this case, it's the blue wire with white stripe. Just go ahead and fold that over. You should feel it latch. If you need to, you can use some needle nose pliers to squeeze it. Now we're working with the red wire with the yellow stripe. This is for the turn signal, so you want to make sure that you have the correct side. In this case, we're splicing the left side, the driver's side. So the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and strip off a little bit of the insulation. And then we're going to place it into the fusible tab provided by Boost Auto Parts into the butt connector. Let's go ahead and slide it into there. Then using a crimping tool, you go ahead and crimp it down. Now we're going to go ahead and place the tap onto the disconnect. So you'll go ahead and do that, making sure the metal slides directly into the T-tap and that the disconnect slides all the way forward. Now for the right passenger side turn signal, you're going to be splicing to pin 3 of the black connector. Pin 3 is located in the top row, 3 over from the left. In this case, it's a green with violet stripe. However, the wire color may vary, so you want to go off pin location as primary reference. Now we're going to take the T-tap provided by Boost Auto Parts and place it onto pin 3. So just go ahead and take that and push it straight over the wire. If you need to, you can use some needle nose to help squeeze it. 
We're going to go ahead and strip off the red wire with yellow tracer from the passenger side. So we'll strip a little bit of that off. And then we're going to place it into the fusible tap provided by Boost Auto Parts. So we'll go ahead and slide it into the butt connector. Then we'll go ahead and crimp it down. Now you're just going to take the disconnect and plug it into the T-tap. When doing this, you want to make sure that the disconnect slides all the way forward and that the metal slides directly into the T-tap just like so. These taps do use heat shrink butt connectors, so you'll go ahead and apply heat to shrink them down. Now you're just going to go ahead and plug the BCM connectors back in. The black connector goes on the right. You should be able to feel and hear it latch. And then the brown connector goes on the left. Now you can see what we've gone ahead and done here is we have passed the metal coat hanger through this boot and it's coming through over into the cab here. Now we've gone ahead and taped our blue, white, and black wires. You may or may not have the blue wire depending on your build and we're just going to go ahead and pull it from the underhood area. When pulling it through that boot, be incredibly careful to make sure that the wires do not chafe in any way as that can cause a short. Now what we did is we spliced the passenger side to the driver's side wires and the driver's kick panel so that we only had to run one set of wires through. So we spliced blue to blue, white to white, and black to black. So that's why we have three wires. Alternatively, you can run both sides all the way directly up. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and strip off a little bit of the insulation on the black wire from Boost Auto Parts. We're going to place it into the eyelet provided by Boost Auto Parts and we'll go ahead and crimp that down. Now we're going to be removing this ground nut next to the brake booster. Go ahead and remove that making sure not to drop it. We're going to go ahead and place the eyelet provided by Boost Auto Parts onto the stud and we'll go ahead and refasten the nut on. This is a 10 millimeter. I'm going to go ahead and remove the lid to the underhood fuse box by releasing these two latches. Now we're going to go ahead and remove the Park Lamp LT fuse. Go ahead and look at your fuse box diagram to locate the proper location. In this case, it's this 15 amp. We're going to take the original Park Lamp LT and place it into the lower slot on the fuse tap. We're going to go ahead and strip off the blue wire for the running light before placing it into the fuse tap. Go ahead and place it into the fuse tap, and then we'll go ahead and crimp it down. I'm just going to go ahead and place the fuse tap into the original location. We're going to remove the fuse for the backup lamp. In this case, it's this 10 amp. We'll just go ahead and remove that. Go ahead and place that into the lower slot on the fuse tap. I'll go ahead and strip the white wire. And we'll place that into the buck connector on the fuse tap. And we'll go ahead and crimp it down. Go ahead and place the fuse tap back into the original fuse location. And we'll just go ahead and put this trim piece back on. Now you can see we've gone ahead and put that plastic trim back over the nuts. We're going to go ahead and secure that plastic trim. If that does pop out at all, it runs on the inside of this trim all along here. So you'll go ahead and need to get that lip on the inside in order for it to hold. We'll go ahead and put the door panel back on. First thing we're going to do is go ahead and put this connector back together. You'll push it together, then you'll slide the gray latch down, and then you'll slide the pink latch down to lock it in. Go ahead and put that trim piece back in. And then we're going to go ahead and put the, the door cable back on. First you'll start by latching the ball. And then you'll pull it out to the side, back around, and slide it forward, and it should hold. Then you're going to go ahead and line up the door panel. You want to make sure that the lock lever clears first. Then you're going to start by snapping together the window seal trim area. You should just hear the body panel snap. And then you're going to work your way around the rest of the door panel snapping the trim clips. We'll go ahead and put back in this 7mm bolt. Close the two down here. Finally, the two at the bottom. Just go ahead and replace the dust covers. And just like that, your installation is complete. 
You can perform a functionality test of the mirrors now. Just test the blind spot if equipped, start the vehicle, and check to see that the blind spot indicator comes on. To test the reverse lights, start the vehicle and place the vehicle into reverse while pressing the brake. You can also test the running lights by activating them manually if equipped, as well as the turn signals. Shown here is the switchback option where it's a white running light changing to a flashing amber turn signal. To get all the parts shown in this video, as well as many other parts and accessories for your vehicle, check us out at BoostAutoParts.com.